Hello and welcome to this example of using equations of state to do a more realistic uh, process calculation. And so what we're looking at here is an ammonia plant. So this is the flow sheet that I've been using in a few examples. And what we're looking at in particular is the chiller section of this process where what we need to do is to cool ammonia down to 250 Kelvin or minus 23 degrees Celsius so that it liquefies for storage. Now to get down to these sorts of temperatures we can't use air and we can't use cooling water as we would often use on a process plant to do cooling. So we need a refrigeration system to do that work for us. And a sensible choice would be to use an ammonia based refrigeration system seeing as how you're on an ammonia plant and you have lots of ammonia lying around. Now here we have a, a typical refrigeration cycle. So we have a compressor, which is the thing that we're interested in. And then after the compressor, we've got our condenser, our expansion valve, and then we're actually cooling the process stream in the evaporator of the refrigeration cycle. Now in this compressor here, we're compressing gases from, uh, from one bar all the way up to 16 bar. Now to increase the pressure by that amount it's actually uh, difficult, uh, impossible to do in a single stage. So what we have instead is a multiple stage compressor where we have our gas coming in at one bar and then it goes through one compression stage two compression stages, three compression stages, four compression stages until it comes out at 16 bar. In between we've got cooling happening. Okay, so because this improves the energy efficiency of the compressor. And then what we're specifically going to be interested in here is this final stage. Okay, so here's our system boundary and what the gas is coming in at, okay, so in here it's coming in at 8 megapascals and at 310 Kelvin and it's coming out here at 16 uh, megapascals, not bar, sorry. But we don't know what temperature it's coming out at, but we do know what the isentropic efficiency is of this stage and it's 70 percent or, or 0 0.7. So, so we're going to figure out the energy consumption of this stage, okay, so the amount of work per mole of flow. To do this, of course, so we're wanting to figure out the amount of energy, we need to make assumptions about the system. So uh, steady state, uh, pure ammonia and no heat loss and because we're interested in uh, work and energy, we need to use the first law. Now I'm missing a few dots here, so that's flow, that's flow, that's flow, and that's flow. There, now it's at steady state, so all my time dependent terms disappear. There's no heat loss, so this disappears. So what this gives me then is that my shaft work per uh, unit of molar flow is equal to uh, my enthalpy in minus my enthalpy out. Okay, so, so I'm wanting to calculate the change in enthalpy between my inlet conditions. Okay, so, so I know my T in and I know my P in, uh, I know my P out, but I don't know my T out, okay, so so that is a question mark. So to be able to, to get my work and to find out what that temperature is, I need to start from a basis and that basis is that I'm going to look at the case of an isentropic compressor. Okay, so, so I'm going to set my uh, entropy change equal to zero. Once I've got that, what that gives me then is my uh, reversible work. From this I can get my real work required 
as being equal to my uh, reversible divide by my efficiency and from my real work I can get my uh, H uh, in minus H out and I can get my temperature out. Okay, so this is a multi-step process. And so we're familiar with this process from having done these types of calculations using tables. But we're wanting to do this calculation now using equations of state instead. So we'll start by looking at how we're going to calculate delta S using our equation of state. And the equation of state that we're going to use is the peng robinson equation of state. And so we start by looking at our path, okay, so we're going to use our three-step path as we've done uh, in the examples in this section, okay, one, two, three. And because we're using an equation of state, we need to get the parameters that are useful for this, okay, so I've got my critical parameters and because it's the peng robinson equation of state, I've also got my eccentric factor. So I've defined my peng robinson equation of state over on the left here. So that's all pretty straightforward. And then what I'm doing here is I'm defining what my steps are. Okay, so, so step one is given by a volume change from V1 to VB. And I'm going to do that at a temperature equal to T1. My second step then is I'm going to have my uh, entropy change at constant volume, okay, so V equal to some big volume, and I'm doing that from T1 to T2. And then for my third step, I'm going to do uh, step delta 3 from a big volume to my real volume at temperature T2. Once I've done each of these steps, then what I can do is just add them all together to give me my total entropy change. Now that's all well and good, but the issue is, is that I don't know what T2 is. So what I need to do is make a guess for T2 and then solve for delta S and see if I've actually guessed correctly or not. So, so drawing this out into an algorithm then, so, so my first step here is to uh, guess what T2 is equal to. My next step then is to uh, solve for uh, uh, V1, okay, at T1, P1, and also to solve for V2 at T2, P2. Okay, so I'm substituting my equation of state into MATLAB or something like that, and I'm solving for the volume that gives me that pressure at that temperature. Once I've got those, then I'm able to substitute those volumes in and calculate my uh, delta 1s and also my delta 2s. And then I can calculate my uh, delta s is equal to delta 1s plus delta 2s plus delta 3 s and then I can decide if my entropy change is approximately equal to zero. Okay, uh, if yes, okay, then I found my uh, reversible temperature and if no, then I need to go back and make a new guess for my, my outlet temperature.
And so we keep guessing and guessing and guessing, or you can set up a loop in MATLAB until you find this outlet temperature. So that gives us a starting point to work from. So that ends that example for the moment. We'll continue this example in part two of this video.